were thinking about painting in Italy, three artists, Cimabui, Giotto, and Duccio, you got to give it a little Italian flair, were thinking about their altarpieces, which you've just read about, and we're coming down here on the page to compare these three because these three tell us the story of what's changing in a really clear way. So we're going to look at how the textbook helps you analyze these three in relation to this question. What evidence, oh, there's something in the way, remind me of tomorrow. What evidence of new artistic developments can be seen in these painted altarpieces? So let's see how the textbook is responding to that question, is dealing with that question. And we turn to section 8.2. It's titled Italy. Notice that more and more the textbook is going to be dividing your attention into different regions. It's organizing the art and the information by region. You will need to increasingly be thinking about what is a regional style and what is a regional culture. So here we are in Italy to get even more regional. They're talking about Florence, Florentine architecture and metalwork. We're not looking at that right now. It's worth attention, but we're moving on. They do show you the public plaza that you saw in the video, the Palazzo della Signoria. Again, these public space in front of the city council that deals with the public interest of the city. They show you the baptistry doors. Let's skip to the next page where they focus on painting. Florence and Siena, rivals in so many ways, each supported a flourishing school of painting in the 14th century. You could get as regional as talking about the art of Florence, the painting in Florence, and the style in Siena. Both grew out of late 13th century painting traditions and engendered individual artists who became famous in their own time. Let's pause to actually take stock of what we have just learned. We're dealing now with individual artists. We have almost never until now actually known the name of an artist. We've dealt with manuscripts created by anonymous monks. We've looked at stained glass created by teams of craftspeople whose names are not recorded. We're now looking at individuals, Chimabui, then Giotto and Duccio. That's really significant. And we'll have to ask why. What is it about these places in this time period that individual artists are making their mark? Let's go back, though, to the paragraph. The Byzantine influence, the Maniera Greca, Greek style, continued to provide models of dramatic pathos and narrative iconography. In other words, the Byzantine influence had been strongly felt in this region. It had been the standard of style. And they're reminding you that the word Byzantine comes from Byzantium, the ancient word for Constantinople, which is a Greek word because the Greek language and Greek culture had been part of Constantinople from ancient times. So they go on here and they talk about features of Italian painting that were at this time based on Byzantine artistic style such as stylized features, including the use of gold for drapery folds and striking contrasts of highlights and shadows in the modeling of individual forms. When you read a description like that, try to actually look at a, an example of what they're talking about. What are they pointing to? Gold highlights on drapery folds. Here's the gold highlights on baby Jesus. Stylized forms. You remember these kind of traits, flattened bodies, such as this flattened body, rich coloring, including gold. You remember them from the mosaics, the mosaic of Justinian and Theodore, or this mosaic where you see the kind of elegant, long, delicate bodies that are minimally modeled a little minimal modeling, but mostly quite elongated and stylized. 
So they're saying that's the, the, those are the artistic reference points, the style that's conventional at the time. But look, by the end of the 14th century, the painter and commentator Cinino Cinini would be struck by the would be struck by the accessibility and modernity of Giotto's art, which, though it retained traces of the Maniera Greca, was moving toward the depiction of a lifelike contemporary world. They're saying Giotto is moving away from that tradition. This Maniera Greca had been the established way of representing holy figures, but Chimabui and then even more so Giotto are gonna push beyond it. So when they talk about Chimabui here, they're saying that Chimabui was in Florence starting this new stylistic transformation early even before Giotto, who they're gonna explain that the tales that have been handed down say that Giotto was Cimabue's student. About 1280, a painter named Cinini de Peppi, better known by his nickname Cimabue, painted a panel portraying the Virgin and Child enthroned. So that's what we're looking at. And they explain that this is made out of a, a material, a medium called egg tempera, where egg is used as the binder for the pigment. And then they explain that what we're looking at is virgin and child, angels, and then Hebrew Bible prophets. And when they say here, looking out the viewer at the viewer while gesturing toward her son as the path to salvation, she, the Virgin Mary, adopts a formula popular in Byzantine iconography since at least the sixth century, the formula of the hand pointing to the child. And you can click here and they say, oh, look, that's the icon we were just looking at. So there are traces of Byzantine ways of making here, but let's move down and see how they describe the painting. Mary's huge throne, painted to resemble gilded bronze with inset enamels and gems, provides an architectural framework for the figures. And then they want you to look at the highlights on the drapery. Yes, look at the highlights. Okay, they're made with lines of gold in a Byzantine style. And then they, they go on and they say, the viewer, that's us looking at this painting, seems suspended in space in front of the image, simultaneously looking down on the projecting elements of the throne and Mary's lap and looking straight ahead at the prophets at the base of the throne. Look carefully, what are they talking about? What's the spatial relationship between you gazing at this painting and what you see. It's as if you're looking directly at Mary, and yet you also seem to be looking down here. So you have a mobile moving vantage point. You can cast your eyes down underneath this throne to the Hebrew Bible prophets, but you can also look up and as the angels are stacked, or you can look frontally. Space is complicated here. And I wanted to point out that this arch here is a really good example of how this complicated space is ambiguous. You, you read the curve here as a curve back, that these squares are in one plane, and then this curves back and her shoe pokes out in space. But here, it's not so clear that it, that it curves back. It kind of curves back, but it also seems kind of flat. In other words, there's three-dimensionality. And sometimes that three-dimensionality is very pronounced, as in the way her shoe feels like it projects out toward us. But at other times, the three-dimensionality three is somewhat moving toward a two-dimensional flatness like this curve. The angels, we do read them as behind each other, and yet they're relatively shallow. The space, they don't really go back in space. They're more stacked. Pay attention to that because that's what Giotto is going to change.